Here with me is Professor Gerald Steinberg, president of NGO Monitor. Please explain to us why is the, having an NGO Monitor organization necessary? There's a lot of power in non-governmental organizations with a very blatant political agenda. And unfortunately, a lot of that power is targeting Israel. There was a conference in Durban, South Africa back in 2001. 5,000 people, 1,500 organizations all adopted a strategy to define Israel as the new apartheid state, completely based on I'll call it lies to be very blatant about it. And there needs to be some pushback. When you have a tremendous amount of power concentrated, you always need to have checks and balances. And NGO Monitor basically evolved as a form of checks and balances on these organizations, and I think we're having an impact. We see greater caution among the more responsible organizations, more isolation about the ones that are more radical and less consistent in the policies that they claim to promote. Now, given all the relative chaos in our region in the Middle East, how do you see Israel moving forward? Should it get involved? Should it not get involved in regards to Syria, in regards to Iran? I think the policies that have been followed have been exactly what Israel needs, which is to stay out. It's not our conflict in Syria or Egypt or other parts of the Arab world. There are some red lines that we need to protect, and from the reports that we've seen, those lines are protected, but you don't see a lot of rhetoric, you don't see a lot of political talk about what may or may not be happening in Syria over the next couple of years. It's something we have to watch carefully, but it's really an issue for the Syrians to resolve. What's happening in Egypt is for the Egyptians to resolve. We have to be ready to deal with the consequences. How much of a new Middle East this is going to be is very hard to determine, but we have to be ready both for positive developments and for negative developments. And I, I see a consciousness of that within the government, within the Israeli public, and I think a lot of the discussion here at this conference is seriously dealing with those issues. Some of the panels are very much looking at the pluses and minuses. It's up to the United States, really, to lead to international action. Otherwise, it's not going to happen. The theme of this conference is facing tomorrow. What do you find is the most crucial issue when facing tomorrow? It's tough. It's always 50-50 between dealing with the economic, social problems, which are very much combined. In Israel, as in Europe, as the United States, we have to decide how, many, how much we need to take from the people in terms of taxes and what's the best way to spend that. All governments, including Israel, overextended in terms of social services and budgets. We just had a budget vote in Israel, which was very difficult to do. And facing tomorrow means bringing in more technology, bringing in more, creating more jobs, providing the social services, but staying within the budget, staying within the ability of people to survive in that framework. The other half is the security framework around us. It's always been an issue for Israel, 65 years, but it's very different. We've never been in this situation. We had enemies, but we knew who those enemies were. They were consistent. There was one military regime in Egypt since the early 50s. There was one family that ruled in both in, in Iraq and in Syria for dozens of years. That's all gone now, and we're going to have to be able to move quickly, to be flexible. And I think the flexibility that we hear in a lot of the presentations into a, a, a complex new world, not the, the world, the ideal world, the ideal new Middle East that we had talked about and dreamed of back in the 90s, but something much more complex. And, and that's part of the purpose of coming to these meetings, to talk to people about that. Professor Steinberg, thank you very much. Thank you.